So this match was kind of nutty. Uh, opening hand looks pretty good, but we are going second. Thankfully, we do have the evenly matched and the part of extravagance to maybe play out of uh, or draw out of whatever board the opponent sets up. And this is in master rank three, and I'm just like, uh, or sorry, four in order to get to three. And I'm like, this guy's really on Trickstar. But we realize that they're actually using the Trickstar engine because it can get you into Lily Bell, which is a free level two summon to, uh, to enable your sprite engine. So pretty smart stuff by the opponent. I didn't even realize that this was a thing. Um, but yeah, because Bright doesn't play a field spell, why not get some utility out of a archetype that can utilize a field spell in order to get you into your engine, right? So you can see here, off of any Trickstar starter, they're able to get into Sprint and now able to go full Sprite combo going into their uh, Sprint, Nimble engine, Gigantic into uh, Swap Frog engine. And you already know if you watch my videos, this is what Sprite does. They're all about just cycling through their engine. So now they're gonna get their starter off, which is gonna get them into their Sprite engine. And you can already see the setup. Once again, not protecting their carrot with the elf. So in my opinion, not the way you really wanna set up, but they get everything going. Melfi, IP, elf, carrot. You know, they've got everything in rotation, plus three cards in hand, probably a hand trap. And we have to, you know, what are we gonna do here? Have to hope to resolve evenly against this carrot. Can we draw the Book of Moon to or, or Dark Ruler, right? There's a one in five, one in five copies in the deck, 35 cards are left, and we have an extravagance. So we draw Advent, not what we want to see. We're gonna of course activate extravagance. Do we bait out an Ash or the Carrot? No, but we bait out a Max C, which I'm like, that is actually really good for me. So please go ahead and do that. The nice thing about activating extravagance now is people probably think that you're on Labyrinth. We do draw the Fossil Dyna. So what I'm gonna do is continue to try to bait the Carrot here, activate the Advent of Adventure, banishing Eaglin and grabbing map. The opponent still does not activate the carrot here. So at this point, I'm like, well, if I activate map, it's a risk because if they don't negate with carrot, then my evenly matched is offline. So I have to take the alternative route in activating evenly matched here, forcing out the carrot negate. And this is the thing that lost them the match. The opponent had this match one, but because they tribute the Melfi of the forest, now they don't get the effect to negate a monster when this caddy is bounced back. So because of that, I'm gonna be able to resolve my bird effects here. So what you're gonna see me do is actually start with main phase two, normal summon patchy, because I wanna shut off the IP, I wanna shut off the elf, and I wanna shut off the Melfi caddy. It can still get spun back to hand, but they can't special summon a synchro monster like the Herald of Arclight for the Omni negate. But if they would've kept the Melfi of the forest, they could have negated something. They could have negated the patchy permanently. They could have negated my Robina if they wanted to continue to wait because they know I have map in hand now. But because they sacked the Melfi of the forest, this gets rid of all their interruptions off the one patchy here, right? So you can see the amazing utility you get off of this. Um, and now the opponent has no more interruptions. This is crazy, right? So the, we dealt with the carrot and we shut off everything else with the patchy here. Now map is gonna allow us to play in main phase two. So we're gonna go ahead and search out the uh, token off of the Robina here, which we chain block with the Eaglin. So you can see how I'm still kind of just playing around Ash because off map we banish the Empin and then we chain block the Robina with the Eaglin that we banished from Advent. So I didn't have to raw summon Eaglin and search for Empin, risking getting Ashed. Um, now we're gonna double tribute for the Empin, and now again, the Empin shuts off the Mascarena and the Elf, even if our Fossil Dyna gets outed here. Um, but we're gonna be able to grab the Robina and the Unexplored Winds. Summon the Eaglin here, and we're gonna, of course, search for the Ryza, because we wanna keep the opponent locked. We're gonna tribute the Empin, because I don't need the Empin if I have the Apache up, right? And uh, the uh, Monarch is going to spin back the Carrot, spin back the Maxi, forcing them to draw Maxi next and put the Monarch back to my hand. Activate Unexplored Winds, set Trap card, pass turn. Now you might think Quantum, your Apache is left open, right? Well, again, think about how think the game was when Barrier Statue was in the game. They can Special Summon. This IP can't beat over it. The Caddy can't beat over it. The Elf can, the Gigantic can but we have the unexplored win. So what we're gonna be able to do here is go rotation, Robina, uh, hopefully no Ash, because we know they're drawing Max C for turn, but search for Stree, Stree, banish the Empin, summon Toucan, bring back Empin, use unexplored wins, tribute off Elf, and you know a bird for the, Emp for the Empin, and then bring out Reza, Ryza, sorry, by spinning back the Gigantic, getting rid of all of their um, cards that can beat over the Patchy. If they end up summoning, normal summoning something, we also just resummon the Ryza here because we'll have, a, we'll have a free summon off map. That's what the Patchy forces them to do, right? It forces them on the normal summon. We know that they draw Maxi for turn. They are gonna force my Dreaming Town here off of the Trickstar 
field spell. And like I said, that's totally fine because off this rotation, the opponent realizes that, yeah, if they didn't have the Ash in hand already, this Robina is going to resolve and get the street in rotation and out their board with the unexplored wins. And we're able to come back and take the game over that sprite negate board. You know, I think most of my wins are actually going second, to be honest. Like it was a joke before, like in my previous videos, I'm like, I'm always going second, I'm winning. But I was winning going first too, but like, I'm actually losing more, I think, going first than I am going second, which is crazy. The opponent here reveals that they're on trap tricks and they activate shifter. I'm like, aces, that is great because I would love it if your traps and monsters were not getting recurred. So that's fantastic for me. Um, we do have the dark ruler, which is gonna be super clutch. The opponent does reveal this interesting uh, trap in the treacherous trap hole. So destroy two monsters on the field. And I'm like, okay, they set their whole hand and I'm like, Four cards deep, let's go duality. Draw for turn, okay. Unexplored wins, very good card to use. We're gonna start off with the Dark Ruler no more. Solemn check, no Solemn there. Negate the Sarah. this is definitely the heart and soul of the deck. Um, and then we're gonna Gold Sark, which is kind of risky. I took like 30 seconds for some reason to think here, but I end up banishing Toucan here. Um, I Honestly, I'm just like, I'm gonna Gold Sark because I wanna thin my deck from one more card because I want a duality into an evenly match. That's why I did this. So I'm like, evenly, please. I deck, I, deck, I, deck thin by, I deck thinned by one. Last card is evenly matched. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. So we go battle phase and execute the evenly. The opponent is going to compulse back their, I don't even know how to say this name. Arachnocampa. Okay. Uh, back to the hand. Sure. Banish everything. And they keep the one card that we know about, which is the treacherous trap hole. And I'm like, I think you need two monsters to use that. So the unexplored wind is going to come in clutch because the opponent, you know, they probably realize like, uh, yeah, if you're on Floanderese, which I believe it revealed that we were, right? Uh, yeah, because it revealed the Eaglin. And we banished the Toucan off of Gold Sark. So the opponent knows we're on Floanderese. They probably think keeping Treacherous tra Trap Hole would make sense because I need two monsters on field to tribute. So as soon as I put two small birds up, straight up just Treacherous Trap Hole them, I can't extend. But the Unexplored Winds draw for turn comes in super clutch here because I can just summon one monster uh, and then search the Empin, use the Unexplored Winds, get that treacherous trap hole out of here. Everything is being banished. The Empen is gonna set up full control and that is GG's thanks to the Dark Ruler evenly combination. Whew, was able to overcome that. For those of you that are fans of the Harpy Dancer, I've got a video here from my old deck list where I was still running Duster and the Dancer. Going second in this matchup, the opponent starts off with an Extravagance and they reveal that they're on Labyrinth, Pitching Chandelier and the Keldo, which is pretty strong to set big welcome summon out the lady and set a back row and pass now of course we were still on the duster in this match the opponent reveals one of their cards in the draw phase in max c so that's good for us normally it would be really good for them but in this case good for us we start off with the duster to force the back row here and we know that they're going to go for uh lovely for some reason they chain lady and i'm like sure set your card it's going to get wiped by duster anyways and you notice we make what might seem like an odd play in activating advent of adventure and the reason i do this is because I want to actually get mapped to hand pitching the street. This does two things. One, it puts a bird in the banished pile for chain blocking in case this final card is an Ash Blossom. But even if the lovely snipes map, that's fine. We play through with Robina. If they snipe uh, one of our birds, we play through with map, right? So if, if I didn't do this and they snipe my Advent of Adventure, I lose my ability to get map in rotation for free. So I'm totally fine with this. Let them set their card in the imperm. It's gonna get wiped anyways, and it's not activatable yet regardless, unless they have Ku Clock. And sure enough, they do indeed go for the lovely new chain link. Lovely will snipe a card out of the hand and Chandelier goes back to the opponent's hand and they do indeed snipe the map. So now we're gonna activate duality and off of this, we are going to grab the final bird in the Eaglin, which means we now have all four birds in rotation. We summon the Eaglin first, so it's chain blocked with the Stree. And then instead of summoning Stree, like I probably should have, I make a mistake and summon the Robina. So I was susceptible to Ash here, which is pretty bad. But of course, we're now going to search the Dancer and grab uh, a Unexplored wins actually off of the Empin, not trap card. And you might be thinking, what the heck are you doing this for? We summon Toucan, again, weird weird play here. Not sure why I did it this way, but the Toucan grabs back Robina and I summon the Dancer. Now Dancer is nice for this other reason as well, because obviously as you continually summon these birds, you have to keep summoning. So you can't set up anything else in between. Well, Dancer allows you to break that summoning because you can see here, I summon Dancer, that ends the summoning. I've used my normal summon for turn. Obviously I don't have my map in rotation for the extra summon. So now I'm going to be able to activate that Unexplored Winds that I searched off of the Empin, and then I can activate Dancer Effect to bounce the Empin back, use the Unexplored Winds that I set up to tribute over the Toucan. So this is why I summoned the Toucan, um, and I didn't just leave it on Empin to try to 
you know, resummon, uh, like with map or something like that off the street, so that I could use it as, the, I can use the token that is as tribute material for the unexplored wins that I was going to set up, and that leaves me with my Harpy Dancer still on field. Now, I was able to out the Lovely with the Unexplored Winds, and this is the card that wins you the match against the Labyrinth, so this is why I set up this way. Now, off of this Empin Summon, I'm going to be able to search for Trap Card. The opponent realizes with the Unexplored Winds, because the Trap Decks are slow, I'm going to just be able to tribute over the Traps and or Silver Castle here, and they kind of realize it's a lost cause, and they just end up scooping it up. So in this matchup here, we are going second. Our opening hand is pretty good for going first or second, but we do have to worry about hand traps. The opponent starts off by setting four and passing, so pretty strong indication that they are on Labyrinth, given, you know, sleeves and avatar and back four back row. So of course, we're gonna start off with the evenly matched. The opponent reveals D barrier, we don't care about that. And big welcome to summon and bounce an Ariana. We're gonna start by normal summoning Rubina. The opponent does keep and chain the Imperm on it. Thankfully, we drew Advent of Adventure for turn, which gets us our map and saves the Rubina from getting negated by the Imperm. The opponent reveals that the one card they kept in their hand was a second Imperm, so you can see they did not commit all five back row. Thankfully, we have the second dodge in the Book of Moon, which will save the Eaglin from getting negated, allowing us to search for our Empin and get back our Rubina from the Banished Pile. We are not gonna summon off uh, the Eaglin, because we're going to go ahead and activate map to summon Tukin, and at this point, we are so far ahead in the game, the opponent is just going to end up scooping there. So GG's, the Imperm and the Advent of Adventure coming in super clutch to allow us to play through double Imperm despite evenly matching.